The Galaxy Note 10 series has been hyped like crazy ever since its first mention in the rumour mill, but now the real deal is out, is it any good compared to its well-established predecessor? The Note series tends to take all of the best hardware and the best software and puts it into one complete package. This happened with the Note 9 and it was dubbed the Enthusiast's phone. But this time around, on paper at least, the Note 10 seems to take a considerably different approach and we're going to talk about that. Just looking at the raw spec sheets of all three devices, it's really easy to see the newer bits dropped in. The newer Snapdragon 855, AX Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6, and Infinity O display, such as the one found in the Galaxy S10, they're all featured here on this new 10 series layout. Other notable changes here include the ever popular wide angle camera, UFS 3.0 storage, and much faster charging. On paper, it looks like the Note 10 Plus is the true successor to the Note 9, whereas the Note 10 standard seems to be a bit of a downgrade, not in system on a chip or in features, but it tends to take the smaller display and the smaller battery that comes with that. We used to notes having the bigger display, the bigger body than most phones on the market and a big battery to go with it. But this time around, that seems to be dedicated to the Note 10 Plus. The 10 Plus seems to do better on charging in wireless since it's 15 watts over 12 watts of the standard Note 10 and it actually does better wired as well. Although you'll have to pay more to get the 45 watt brick Otherwise, out of the box, the, both the Note 10 and the Note charge at the same speed. The Plus model, including the Quad HD Plus display, the micro SD card slot, the bigger battery, more camera sensors on the back, it seems to add up to be the better deal over the Note 10. You also get extra RAM here on the base model along with that mammoth 6.8 inch screen and the option for 512 gigs of storage. Samsung did decide to keep some of the traits from the previous notes on this year's note as well, including the S Pen, which has been improved slightly for better ergonomics, and we also get some new air gestures, and we get to keep the headphone... No, we're not keeping the headphone port. Yeah, so the Note 10 drops the headphone port, and that is a real shame because that's what was keeping a lot of people in the Samsung family, the Samsung ecosystem. And the Note 9, which is kind of the phone that rounds everything off, had the port, that was the last note that had the headphone port, and that is a big shame. These changes seem to melt over to other parts of the device, including more glass and less metal visible externally, far thinner bezels, sharper, tighter corners to the display, and these cool new colours that feel less executive than the standard flat colours that we've been used to on previous notes, but seem more fun and exciting, and probably what's trending right now. For the first time in Galaxy Note history, we get wide angle cameras, or at least a wide angle camera on the back of the phone. That's something that I really love personally because that's something I've always wanted in a Note that hasn't happened until now. It was kind of obvious it was going to happen because it was in the Galaxy S10 and uh, basically the entire lineup of that. And I always found the telephoto lens to be a little bit lacking, so having the option for all three is perfect. And on the Plus model, you get a depth vision sensor as well. What that will do, well, only time will tell. We also get live focus and video here too, which is that like faux focus kind of fake bokeh effect. And the fact that it's able to do it in real time in video is brilliant. It's something that's very computationally heavy and it's gonna be very hard to pull off, but if Samsung does pull it off, that would be absolutely fantastic. But man, I've been talking about these extra features. Let's just go back a little bit. Let's talk about that headphone port. It's something that I feel should have been on the note and I could have kind of gotten over it if it was taken away from the S series, the S10, and just left on the Note. Because the Note's kind of the powerhouse, it's like the enthusiast's phone, it's the people's phone, it's like everyone will go to this device if they want the best of the best. But now, it's not quite like that. The fact that the lower tier devices are keeping the headphone port and the higher end ones aren't, and mainly because of the market, it just kind of seems wrong. Like the fact that we're heading towards a market where you pay more for fewer features. Of all the devices on the globe, you had to pick the Galaxy Note 10 to get rid of the headphone port. And Samsung, you've let yourself down, you've let us down, and most importantly to you probably, you've let your brand down, you've let your image down, as the one phone that kind of kept the headphone port and was still mainstream, now doesn't seem to have that at all. Way to disappoint, guys. So, on paper, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus seems to be the true successor to the Note 9. The Note 10 standard, well, I don't know about that. I feel like it's more of a downgrade and maybe aimed for people who still want that S Pen and still want that user-friendly experience, 
but don't want to cough up over a thousand dollars for a smartphone. Anyway, with that, it's about it from me. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Authority. Thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. And check out the full written version of what I've been talking about today in the description. Again, I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Authority, and I will see you later. Peace.